What do you remember about pointers? <laughs> you can do almost anything, yeah. Uh, it, 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 so in, in particular, uh, all of your programs code. Basically, all the data, the, everything you've ever you know used, new or uh, uh, allocated uh, uh, on the stack, it's all somewhere in memory. So there's a number that lets you go and read uh, read stuff out of there. So so this is uh, this is just an extremely powerful technique, right? And uh, <coughs> the the downside is it can be super confusing. Actually, uh, it, it lets you break the whole type system. Uh, so we, uh, uh, so, so, so I, 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 I feel like the syntax is actually a little bit easier in assembly language. So if I, uh, if, if I want to allocate some data, so let me allocate some data somewhere. So let's see. So, uh, so here, here's my data, and uh, my data is going to be a pointer. At, uh, the way you, the way you set up a pointer, you notice it looks exactly like I'm declaring like a label for using jump with. And, and it's because uh, jump is actually just going to uh, uh, this, uh, this, this area. So let's see, so if I, if I copy the pointer, my data, into the register RAX, then uh, let's see, then it's going to read the address of this thing. So actually, I don't even know if I need any stuff there. So th there I just read the address of this. Uh, if, I, if, I if, I wanna, if I want the assembler to uh, allocate some space for just a number, how do I do that? Uh, yes, data quad word will just drop me in. So if I want to have a three stored somewhere in memory there, uh, you notice the pointer shouldn't change. Yeah, pointer does not change. And the pointer is not three, right? The, th th that number is the location of the three. So in, instead of reading the location, how do I get to the, uh, the actual three? So yeah, I'm going to index into memory. Just like I'm indexing a big array, like uh, I mean, the, the sort of array part is always just memory. So there's no, so you, you don't actually say like it, it looks just like I'm indexing an array, except there's no there's no array listed there. We're treating memory like an array. Now the, the square brackets are really super duper dangerous. So for example, if uh, uh, you do that, and then I say yeah, let me read uh, RA. So uh, this this seems a little bit weird. Uh, I'm reading Rx as a pointer. I'm taking the data and sticking it to Rx as a value. M maybe it's easier to understand if I use two different registers there. So what happens if I do this? I mean, the weird part about the brackets, like there's no types gonna save you, right? So uh, the first set of brackets is good because inside the brackets is a pointer and uh, it's pointing to the, the three. So I'm gonna get, so R6 is gonna be three and then I'm gonna crash because I read memory address three. So we, we should be able to look and see RCX got the value three because that's where we copied it in. And, uh, and then we access memory at address three. So, so it, you know, if, if you look at the details of the crash, sometimes it's easier to figure out what on earth is happening. Uh, let's see, if, if I just wanna copy the three over RX, how would I do that? Yeah, so, so leave off the brackets and now the, everything's, everything's okay. Uh, what if I have, I have no brackets? What, what number ends up in RAX? So I'm just taking the pointer, my data, and copying the pointer into RCX. So, I, I just have, so, so the pointer is still in RAX. And now if I want the three, I can, uh, if I put the brackets in on this side, so notice I've, I've copied the pointer around, because it's just a number. So I, I copy the pointer into a register, and then I can read the, uh, the pointer out of the register. Does that make sense, or is that where it starts to get weird? It started to get weird a long time ago, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, qu qu questions so far? Okay. What if what if there are two numbers? I got a three and a seven. In particular, uh, there's a way to do pointer arithmetic. 
And uh, the confusing, th th there's actually nothing particularly confusing about point arithmetic. You're just doing, I mean, the, the pointer is a number. You're just adding and subtracting from the number and that moves the pointer around. Yeah, so, 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 so the real question is, how are the bytes actually stored for these two numbers? And, and it turns out uh, uh, this is a pretty common way to lay things out. So first number goes into memory somewhere. And the next number is just uh, however many bytes I used for that down in memory. So if I, uh, uh, if I add to RCX 8, and, and the number 8 there is because that's the number of bytes in this thing, then I should, I should move my pointer from the 3 down to the 7, and I pull out the 7. And it, it, there's a million ways to mess this up. So for example, people think like, oh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's 64. That's moving, so, so when you move a pointer, it's moving a number of bytes. What is 64 bytes below my data? Oh, somewhere down here, I have no idea. So this is actually probably the rest of the program's code is somewhere down there, so yeah, probably code, I don't know. So uh, it, it, it's actually very easy to go uh, off, the, off the rails here. So uh, th the other thing that happens a lot is people think like, uh, was it four somethings per something? Like uh, if, if, if you get this number wrong, so, so four is actually half the size of this. So what we're gonna get is actually the high bits of this one and then the low bits of this one. So you can see there is a seven, but it's kind of teleporter accident seven. The seven has been shifted into some strange new dimension. Let's, uh, okay, yeah, excellent, excellent point. Uh, let's, uh, so, so for example, uh, I wanna print a, uh, uh, print something to the screen that's not just a number and not using net run stuff. So for example, uh, printf, which we'll see in a sec, or putf. Uh, so the putf, right, is this handy C function, writes a string to the screen and it puts a new line in there, so that's, that's great. Uh, you notice what putf takes as an argument a pair pointer, because uh, the way you deal with strings in plain C is via pointer. Actually, the, the, the deep down, the way that C++ deals with strings is also via pointers. The way you do dynamic memory is via pointers. The way, so, so uh, th there's a lot of programs that you literally can't write unless somewhere down there, there you're doing something with pointers. And uh, you, you can either like be insulated from it, like in Java, you have a string object. It's just magical, it's a string. Actually, that, that, that's kind of a nice way to be writing C++. You're just like, it's a standard string, what's in it? I don't care, unicorns and magic. And uh, most of the time, that's actually the right, the right level to be thinking about it, right? I'm, I'm just moving strings around, you know, high, high abstraction level. But when the string breaks, it, when the program crashes when you read the string, you're like, the unicorns have failed me. I'm going to have to actually open the back hatch on the unicorns and see what's going wrong with the unicorns and uh, the, the rainbows are not in there. That's the problem. Uh, so so g generally speaking, like, uh, uh, I've, I've totally had many cases where uh, I can just live a full and useful life without worrying about what's happening inside standard string. And then when I have to do something really wacky, uh, so uh, th there's a great example. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell it anyway. Uh, inside a standard string, there's, there's all sorts of pointers and things. And uh, uh, we messed up on our main server, the big robotic server we run, Robot Moose. Uh, we deleted what we thought was the old copy of the code and turned out to be the current copy of the code. Now we got Git, it's like this is no problem, like the source code is fine, but the whole database of all the robotic stuff that people have been working on, in particular we were hoping to take into the classroom the next day, was deleted. And we're like, okay, okay, we know we gotta back up the database more often, that's, uh, that's thing one. And thing two, uh, the server was still running, even though the directory it was in was, had been deleted. So we're like, we can do this. <laughs> so this was my, my, Mike Moss and I, we go and uh, we, we uh, uh, in, actually we, we fire up a backup copy of the server. Uh, and we, we say, okay, there's the backup copy of the server. We figure out where the database is living inside the inside memory. And, uh, and then we, we, uh, we figure out exactly what bytes we need to poke 
to make, uh, to make it save a copy of that database out to the disk. And we're like, we just made it work on the backup copy, okay, the real copy of the server that's living in this, like, you know, it's been banished uh, out of existence. We, uh, 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 we basically uh, connect the debugger to it, stick bytes into memory in the appropriate places to we actually change the backup path to a directory that now exists, and, uh, and then, and then uh, 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 call the little function that makes it dump the database, and uh, we got the backup copy of the database. So we managed to, to like resurrect uh, the, the data, even though the whole, the whole directory is just gone, like, yeah. I mean, the, the, the conventional thing would be like, your data's gone, you're screwed, like, just admit defeat. But, because we, we, we understood how, you know, uh, how far down we needed to go in the layers of abstraction to get the, the stuff back out. Uh, right, so magical powers. Uh, let, so, for, for example, uh, in the, the fresher released half done homework, <laughs> so th th there's, there's a kind of like almost obsolete feeling homework now that's like has no pointers in it that's, that's due uh, this Saturday. And I've given you the first half of the next homework. Should probably split up homeworks on sub weak granularity because we're, you can see we're just whipping through assembly. So th there's a, so, so the uh, homework three is, uh, it's, it's, uh, so if you finish up the first four problems on homework three, there are more problems. This is this is the big warning that like, uh, <laughs> do not think like, oh, homework three, I'm done with that. Uh, you, you just, uh, so, so, so by the end of today, uh, hopefully you should be able to do those. So uh, one of the things you have to do there is print some stuff. So, uh, so it turns out putS is a really easy way to, uh, so standard C function called putS, right? It returns a useless integer uh, and it takes a pointer as an argument. So. What, uh, so I, I know we're gonna have to do extern put s and call put s, but if I just run this, it's gonna crash. Uh, let's see, if I can make it assembly. Put s, shake vaults, yep, uh, that's, that's cool. Uh, and it's because it's reading memory at address eight, because eight is probably what somebody left in RDI. Yeah, RDI has the value eight. Uh, so we, we, we need to pass an argument into put s. We need to pass a pointer into put us. So, uh, let's, so something needs to go into RDI, what? Well, let's, let's make up a label. So here's like uh, the string. So we'll go string. And of course it's gonna be down here, it's the string. Now I can use DQ to allocate bytes one at a time. So this, th uh, this is a really awful way to do it, but uh, hopefully this will make sense. So the letter A, is hex 41. So I can do hex 41. We'll see, we'll see if we get an A or a crash. All right. This feels really uh, not, not easy. Uh, th th there's another w so super weird thing about this. So let me print A, B, C. So we got 41, 42, 43 in hex. So we have 41, 42, 43. And what we get is not A, B, C. Ah, uh, right. A string in plain C is an array of cares. How big is a care? So it totally depends, actually. It depends on the compiler, et cetera. Uh, in uh, uh, in Linux, at least, care is still stuck at uh, one byte. It's tiny. It's it's in fact just barely big enough to store two hex digits, right? One byte is two hex digits, and that's just barely big enough to store ASCII. In particular, it doesn't doesn't work if you have like non ASCII uh, stuff. You, you have to break it up into eight uh, bit pieces it's called UTF eight. So uh, it's capital A B C. Uh, so, so, so the, the weird question is, so it's printing these things one byte at a time, and each of those is a byte, try. Uh, wh why, so, so uh, th th there's this question. When I move a pointer to figure out, find the rest of the string, so, so, so I mean, th the weird part about C strings is that uh, care pointer points to one care. And then I could, I, there's only two directions to move the pointer from there to find more cares, right? And so I could move them like uh, to higher addresses or to, to, to uh, well, 
the super annoying thing about memory. No one has, somehow we've not agreed as to which direction zero, zero, address zero I've seen written at the top of the screen. Or the, the top of the screen makes sense because then I'd be like print line one, line two, line three, line four, that's great. Except then people c talk about higher memory, which in higher memory is going down in that list. Uh, or you could put address zero at the bottom of the screen, totally seen that. And uh, advantage of that is that then higher memory, like I have higher addresses, they go higher on the screen. But then it's hard to print things out properly. I've also seen address zero on the left side of the screen going right, or the right side of the screen going left. I probably just did that backwards. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, 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 what I'm going to try to be consistent about is saying address zero is all the way up here, and we're going to print uh, to higher addresses. So I'm going to have higher addresses going down. So if I have a pointer pointing to a byte, so here's, here's a letter like A, then a C string does what I think is the obvious thing, but it, it, to get to the next byte, you add one to the pointer. So what I want in memory is A, B, and C. So that's, the, that, that's I claim, the right way to do it. Actually, uh, there, there's a great question. How do you stop a C pointer? For, uh, if you've got a C string, it's going to be printing cares one at a time. And then at some point, you're going to print, uh, uh, you're going to read a byte uh, that's zero, that's the ASCII zero. This, uh, the, the number zero says that there's no more, and then it stops moving down. If it doesn't see this, uh, th this is the null terminator, they call it. Sounds like an action movie. And uh, so if, if you miss the terminator, then uh, you just keep printing, and you get a bunch of gibberish, which is actually kind of fun. But we'll, we'll see that in a sec. So, uh, so th that's what a string is supposed to look like. Uh, that's, 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 so I was going for 41, 42, 43. So you have to ask this other question. I just declared a BQ as an eight byte block. And uh, which byte comes first? Well, apparently the first byte is this one. Now, so this is, uh, this is somewhat controversial, but this is actually a reasonable way to do things. So this is, this is what Intel decided way back when. So, so Intel is what they call a little endian machine that you're pointing for an integer to the little end. And then if I add one, I get to the bigger end. So, so you know, I've got the smallest value byte at the smallest address, and then I get the bigger value byte at the bigger address and bigger uh, and, and bigger and bigger. This is a kind of a confusing way to do this, but uh, if I print this out, I get a 41, 42, 43. So first byte is A, then B, then C, then there, there's leading zeros, so that's good. That, uh, that will work as, as a number. So we can print A, B, C. This is the most confusing way to do strings imaginable, right? If you just want to print strings, I mean, th there's, there's a lot of really uh, awful things about using DQ to allocate strings. Yes? Uh, it, it, uh, well, okay, here, here's the scary thing. If you're in the middle of an integer, yes, it actually moves you left, which feels weird and backwards. If you're in the middle of something else, it's actually hard to say what direction it moves you. <laughs> so uh, in particular, let's, uh, so I'm going to comment out the DQ. There, there's another much easier way to allocate bytes called DB. That's data byte. So, uh, I can do data byte hex 41, and then another data byte hex 42, and then data byte hex 43, and, and we'll see an easier way to do that in a sec. So, so this is the, 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 the cares A, B, C, and uh, they're just allocated like that. What, what did I forget? I forgot the null terminator, which means the print just keeps printing everything it can find, and these, these aren't really ASCII, like, uh, this weird crap in there, that's, that's awesome. Uh, so uh, so if, if I want to stop printing, I need a DB0, that's the null terminator. So you do that and it should stop, right? Ish. C c questions about the difference here? So DQ allocates one eight byte object in memory. And then you have to worry about like what the byte order of the bytes is if you try and allocate it as bytes. Uh, DB allocates you one byte. And then I do another DB and it's another byte. Uh, so this is equivalent, it turns out, to just doing commas, which makes it much easier. And, and we'll see there's an easier yet way to allocate this. 
Jill, uh, that's, uh, so, so th th that's cool. And uh, Jill, th DB, so this allocates four bytes, the hex 41, 42, 43, and zero. Uh, there's an even easier way, which is uh, DB quotes A, A, B, C. And then you do, you still need the zero afterwards or uh, it uh, just keeps on printing. So you, you, you need to terminate the strings. Question. I don't think so. Well, uh, so yeah, you, you could do something like uh, move rx14. Now, the weird part about this is th this instruction turns into a certain number of bytes. They're going to print as weird gibberish. Yeah, uh, it's not quite a comma. It's actually like the uh, that French C with the little vestigial tail, but it's been cut off. It's uh, scary. So, uh, and then that's some sort of degree sign. I don't know. So somehow that's 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 this stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and it's because there's literally no types. I'm taking code, and it's just, uh, you know, it's like whatever. Yeah, pointer to code, pointer to data, it's all the same. It's a pointer. So, so pointer to code or pointer to data, like all, all good. Uh, so th th this is the sane way to allocate these things. But, uh, but I, I, I claim uh, un understanding what's, uh, what's underneath is, is really what, what we're after here. Uh, okay, quick questions, yes. Oh, cool. Ah, uh, it's probably smart enough to like see, oh, you've got a string there and it's gonna do A is the first byte. So yeah, it's on the sort of little end. Uh, I, I, yeah, this is interesting. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, Forget how to yeah so something like that. So you notice after eight bytes something weird is going to have to happen here. Uh, let me see. Uh, let's see. I I suspect if I, okay so if, if I put in eight bytes so so you really shouldn't use DQ for this right because it DQ is allocating eight byte chunks. So if I have eight bytes of text there E F G H so eight full bytes means it's gonna fill up uh, one whole DQ with those cares, and those are gonna print in order, and then it's gonna go on to the next cares, because uh, basically it's just, that's my first eight byte block and there's no terminating zero. If I put in one more care, it, I think it actually allocates two DQs, and the, the second DQ has, a, has an I and then uh, terminating null. So d d d don't, don't do this. Uh, then you'll get weird things happen on multiples of eight that didn't happen otherwise. Uh, so uh, let's see. So d uh, d data byte a claim is the sort of conventional way to allocate a string, and and of course this can be any string you want, like uh, this. Oops. So you can print whatever you want, and uh, and and there's no real particular length limit. I mean, it's at some point uh, you fill up memory. The, the, the string actually lives right below your code. Yes. Question. Yeah. Uh, I see. Oh. Did you, uh, oh, if if you paste in curly quotes or something, oh, or the. Uh, oh. Testing space today. Oh, oh t today slash uh, actually s th that's that's how I do the lecture note examples. And uh, and I, I have some magic on the server that lets me fill in these examples. Yeah, yeah. S slashes uh, shouldn't be admitting this, but uh, Netrun actually stores all of your saves uh, as files. 
There's no database. It's kind of weird. So if you try and do SQL injection, good luck with that because it's <laughs> there's no SQL. Uh, but uh, but forward slash injection is a complete disaster. If you could name a file, for example, dot dot slash uh, your buddy's name slash uh, save files, you could overwrite their save files. <laughs> if you could uh, write name your homework dot dot slash homework slash name of the homework then you could like make okays, like it'd be a disaster. So I, I, I ban slashes except for carefully, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> if, if you can figure this out, please let me know because then I'll be impressed with you instead of uh, like enraged. Uh, so, uh, R so the string, I move the string pointer into RDI. What happens if I do pointer arithmetic on a string? I'm pointing to the first pair of the string, so that's the capital T there. So wh what happens if I add one? One what? One byte. So a care, right? So I've been allocating bytes. If I move by bytes, this is actually okay. So hopefully I've just uh, uh, skipped the T, and now his is my string somehow. So I, I can totally do point arithmetic. What happens if I move backwards? <coughs> well, my pointer was pointed to the start of the string. I go back one byte. What's one byte before the start of the string? Uh, say that. So I should get one byte of gibberish and, uh, yeah. <laughs> A tilde, I will have to remember that. Uh, if, if you ever have to type in machine code as ASCII, this is apparently how you do it. Uh, so, yeah, so what happens if I move back 10? That's somewhere in here, so more, I actually, I'm probably going to hit a zero that will kill off the string. No, apparently not. How about 100? Where are you moving the string back from? From right here. Oh. So, uh, this, every, all this code ends up, you know, that's, uh, this almost looks like it's telling us something. Right, but, but uh, how can you say that you're starting with this string? Why do you go to return as a minus one? Yeah, so, it, so let's see. So if, if I disassemble, so where's the disassembly? So all of this stuff that I'm typing turns into just bytes stored in memory. Yeah. So in particular, like the string, it thinks of it as this, because apparently uh, capital T is a push RSP. That's a really useless push. And uh, 68 is a push, a big constant. So, so, so it's interpreting these. So these are ASCII. But it's still just next to my code. So it's thinking of it as code. And since uh, it's wacky code, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but if I'm pointing here and I go back one byte, I've actually just started doing the right. Is that because it was you still have to replace? Yeah. Is that because return is right after call? Or is it because no. that is right it's it's right before the string. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you could have as much other stuff up here as you wanted. So, yeah. if you had said uh, if you had another function or function call or whatever called like the example. Mm, yeah. So here's like uh, the decor yeah. is uh, right. like so a so question you, mark. You you back one you had hit the decor. So I'm pointing at the string. Yeah. I go back one byte, and I should be at the decoy, which we never refer to any other way. So there's that. There's the decoy byte, and it doesn't even need a label now. I don't like that either. This is like, th I mean, th you can hit the garbage that doesn't even like <laughs> physically be there. Like, wh well that is like, why does that compile? How can you just have something floating? <sighs> seven, and then you just yeah, that forever? it compiles because there's no rules. <laughs> And so, like, when you break the rules, it's like, Shh, there weren't any. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it, uh, so so, so I, I, should, I should say, uh, this totally, so, so this, this right here is a, rel like, add negative one, right? Uh, this is actually reliable, the way I've written it, but it is not documented well, right? I mean, it looks like I'm pointing to the string. I've got this nice label for pointing to there. And then this is somehow involved. Like, if somebody's like, what? I don't know what that is that's just sitting there. <laughs> then, yeah, th so I, I actually move my pointer back just for extra, you know, wackiness. Uh, th this is the downside with doing the fancy stuff every day, right? 
Uh, I mean, it's it's, it's a, I, I, I always uh, I'm, I'm reaching this point of several of my cars where basically they're like the car, you know, parts break on the car, and I'm like, this car has 160 thousand miles on it. It's not really worth fixing correctly. So I'll just like have some wacky like set of wires that I have to you know jump uh, together to uh, like the the starter is for my uh, uh, my ancient car is a lithium battery in the glove box. So like you get out, you just plug it in. You start the car, and then you sprint out of the car and unplug the lithium before it gets, uh, like, it's getting charged at 14 volts, <laughs> which is enough to cause it to burst into flame, like, pretty quick. It's a 3S, so it, uh, yeah, uh, so it's, it's a really bad idea, but that's that's how I've been getting to work this week. Uh, and uh, and it, it's like, so, so knowing how to do the fancy things can actually keep you from being spammed by, on the side of the highway, really good, but it's not, it's not a great idea to do, like, every day, and this is what I'm realizing. Yeah. Yeah. It does not execute them. They're just data. C c and they're just data because I didn't jump to the string. Uh, I could. So I can jump to the string. I, I guess I better add first. Okay. Where is this going to jump to? Oh, let's say jump to RDI. So, uh, and, and th let me tell you, this is why analyzing malware is hard. Because <laughs> what you get is you get this really wacky series of like, uh, you know, uh, wires are getting zip tied together and wacky like, d d what are you doing? Why is this, uh, how, how are you doing it? Uh, it's, it's, it's uh, they're hot wiring your uh, program to do some new uh, uh, biz bizarre thing. So I'm pointing to the string, per perfectly reasonable way. I'm copying the string pointer to RDI. I'm then doing a really wacky thing of moving the RDI pointer back to what I believe is red, if I've done this correctly. If I jump there, that just returns. It shouldn't print anything. should just return the program is done. Uh, so, so the difference is, now if I, so the value is sitting in RDI, same pointer that I just jumped. So if, if, if rather than jumping there, which executes the red, I, I call uh, putS. putS will print the machine code that represents that return instruction, which comes out as a A tilde, apparently. Yeah. What you do with it. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, I've got this byte sitting in memory somewhere. If I jump to that byte, the CPU is going to execute the byte like it was code. If I if I uh, if I do a memory access on this, so for example, if I like uh, move into RAX, I'm going to read from RDI. That treats it as a uh, this and the next eight bytes are treated as data. So if, if I ret right here, it's going to load it as an int, right? And you can see it's this wacky int, but it ends with a C3, right? Because that's the, that's the first int, or the first byte in that, uh, that int. So, so there it was code. There it's data, but it's treated as an int. And if I don't do either of those, then putS is treating it as, uh, as, as cares to print on the screen. But the trick is, it's the same stuff. Right, this that uh, that byte living in memory is exactly the same hex C three, regardless of what you end up doing with it. And and there's lots of powerful things by being able to say like, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna read I'm gonna grab this uh, just plain data, binary. It's a string off of the network, and then I'm going to figure out how to uh, uh, hotwire jump to execute it like it was code, and then hey, I just took over this machine. <laughs> because I managed to have them take a string and then uh, uh, it's actually machine code that I'm then going to run. So, uh, what? So, 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 again, several levels on which you can understand this. So if, uh, if, you, if you do no point arithmetic, this is the easy way to just print strings in assembly. So we're, you know, make a jump label, allocate the string itself with data byte, uh, copy that pointer into a register and call putS. That's all you got to do. 
But, but I mean, r the reason we're doing this is not because I expect you to like write lots of programs in assembly in your future career. It's because uh, I'm after having you understand how pointers work and uh, you know, so, so, so th th that's why I keep doing weird things instead of just showing you like, here's how you get this done. I'm realizing this is maybe where I start losing people in this semester is because we're switching from like, here's how you move an uh, integer into a register. Here's how you do arithmetic. Here's how, so, uh, so we're moving from sort of the operational understanding to the, the, you know, the detailed, the horror that lives within. Okay, so uh, questions about strings and uh, uh, data byte. I, I'd like to do exactly the same stuff, but in C++ and then C. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in fact, oftentimes the... Uh, the first piece of machine code, all it's doing is it's, uh, it's decrypting the rest of the machine code. So that like the signature analyzer for the firewall uh, or the virus checker can't see what's inside there. And, uh, and, and, and sometimes it'll be like several stage that like uh, there's a little tiny polymorphic decryptor that's, uh, that, that, that doesn't have a fixed signature so it's hard to actually see what it's doing. And then its job is to decrypt the, uh, the sort of like the first stage of the virus and then the first stage of the virus will actually check to see like, uh, uh, do you have the language setting I'm interested in? Because maybe I'm only after people who are running a particular version of Windows or a particular uh, you know language setting. Like uh, I mean, so, so this is this is like active war kind of stuff happening surprisingly often on the internet nowadays. Uh, so like if uh, you know if uh, if it's if it's some some particular language in the Middle East that we're really interested in, then maybe the uh, the uh, you know the, the second stage is going to say hey, uh, I got a possible hit and to actually do a network connection out to the command and control server somewhere and say, you think we should uh, attack these guys? And then maybe it'll wait there for a month or something. And then, uh, and then you know, when the, uh, when the time comes, basically then it's going to uh, decrypt the rest of it. And it's still got the whole payload ready to go there. Uh, yeah, it's a weird, wacky stuff. And anti-forensics is totally a thing. If you see the debuggers running, you activate the decoy stuff that's just there to steal credit card numbers, right, serve spam. Do, do something innocuous instead of whatever they're really after. Uh, anyway, uh, other, other questions on pointers? I mean, the, the malware stuff is super exciting, and I, I got to not derail the whole class to talk about that. So uh, how do we do this in uh, uh, plain? Actually, this, this is basically C++. So let me, uh, I'm going to return it feels, we it feels weird to spell that out okay so we're inside of a function called foo try to remember how to write c++ again okay so uh, it returns a long it's a function named foo and there's curly braces and parentheses this feels uh, feels weird to be writing this class so how do we call put s well it's a function put s uh, I, th I probably already got the header because I think it's in like C, yeah, it's in the standard I.O. header, so we, we already got it. Uh, put, put us a string, like uh, here's a, a hello. So very simple. It, uh, okay, that, uh, that works. What's really happening there? If you wanted to kind of uh, get the compiler to explain more what, uh, what you're doing, how would you do that? If you, if you want to do a print with a string, but the string, you may have several strings you want to switch between. It might make sense to have like a, uh, uh, a variable. So actually it should probably be const. So uh, he, here's, my, here's my string. H have you written this syntax before? So instead of just a constant string, I can put it into a variable. That should still work. How many people have done this? How many people allowed to put hello into string if it's if it's character? It's I care would, pointer, yeah, and that that's yeah, I would uh, yeah. care would be one. <laughs> one. Yeah. yeah, it uh, so so we're actually pointing to the first character. So if I look at uh, dereference the string, so so string is a pointer. Uh, let me dereference the pointer. So this should give me the capital H, which uh, okay, what we should know what we're looking for. Capital H in ASCII is hex 48. 
So I, I think this should return hex 48. Yeah, okay. So the, 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 first, the first care, the, the care we're pointing at, is the H. And then if we add one to the string, so I'm gonna say string equals string plus one. Uh, gosh. I, I don't know how to space operators anymore. I haven't used operators. <laughs> Hello, Lynn. Uh, so, we, and, and as we move to the 65, which is lowercase e. So this is kind of maybe a good thing to grab with. Uh, when you say comp care string pointer hello, somewhere in your memory you've made all of hello, but your thing only points you to You are pointing the first care. Yeah. And then you put, you put S, what happens is you move your pointer along to print out that thing that you want to keep very secret. Yep. Is that kind of? That is exactly what's happening. Okay. Yeah. So uh, put s prints a whole string. <laughs> I honestly am getting rusty at C++. Uh, so what if, uh, so I'm going to just do a for loop here. Uh, and uh, I'm, I don't know where I'm going to stop. So let's see. So I'm going to move down the string. And I'm, I'm going to use uh, put care. So put care prints one care of the string. So uh, print the string, move down this, uh, the pointer, repeat. This is, this is not really idiomatic, but uh, OK. So we got hello, please. Please, please. All right, that's cool. Uh, please enter an input value. Read float, returning number, printing integer, whatever. I array print. File does not exist. Don't ask me. Wh what is this? This is all the strings in the program. Because uh, the compiler allocates your string in its giant uh, you know, data byte section. Yeah. You always get a null terminator after a string. Yes. Uh, you can stop a string early, like, uh, let's see. Uh, So let's see. So uh, I think I think backslash zero. Uh, I think backslash zero sticks in a null terminator. So if, if I do the put s, let's see. So, so I'm, I'm skipping the for loop. I should just comment it out. It would have been more sane. So this does hello, and it ignores the fact that like the end of the universe is uh, just right off the uh, uh, right off the end. But if, if, so if I move the string myself, so actually I, I could do, uh, so if the string is not zero, then I'm going to just print it so it's just a normal care. And uh, otherwise, I'm going to put us like, uh, for, 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 so terminator uh, goes in there. So I can, so I can, I can uh, when I see terminators go by, then I can just flag them. So hello. There was a string terminator, invoke destructor. There's a string terminator. There's some more spare terminators. Uh, please enter an input value. Like that's, that's literally, uh, uh, you know, when you do read input, that's the first thing it prints. So that's, uh, that's, that's from that. Uh, this is some weird formatting junk. Uh, there's a read float. Yeah, so, so this, is, this is all the rest of the stuff. Now, uh, all this stuff is actually stuff in your program rather than stuff in different programs, that would be really start to get scary. Uh, so, so, so does this make sense? So a C string is a pointer to the first care. And it's actually really common. So, so here I'm being really explicit about how I'm doing this. Uh, l l let me show you how you would do the put s in plain C. So this would be uh, care. And, and uh, I'm still inside a function, so I'm just going to leave that off because I'm lazy. And uh, so... Uh, Care pointer p, and it's usually uh, at uh, plain c. It's typically one care long, so it's like uh, this is string. So there is a terminating null. So you you would probably do uh, while star p is not zero. So while we haven't hit the end of the string, I'm going to do put care uh, star p. Now the problem is I need the plus plus. Right, I got to move down the string. So the 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 standard c way to do this is just that. So what this does is this dereferences the pointer, and then that, that, that goes into put care, and uh, will increment the pointer to move it down the string. 
So this just works its way down the spring. Brings out uh, the cares of the spring one at a time. Pre-increments, uh, oh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, so so uh, his is string is probably, yes. Yeah. And then uh, this, this, I don't know. I think that tries to change the string. This probably crashes. Yeah, you, uh, so, so uh, w weird thing about strings is that uh, they're actually stored in read-only memory now. And uh, last 10 years, they, they really started locking a bunch of this stuff down for security reasons. Uh, so, so you notice, I can do star P and I can read. And I, I mean, so, so some stuff is really locked down, like I can't change various things, but uh, I, can actually, I can still have this pointer point haywire. Uh, so for example, I mean, while true, or uh, how much is that gonna print? Like, it's gonna print everything it can, basically. Uh, oh. True is not even a thing. You have to say wow one, <laughs> plain C. They don't. They don't have true or false. So this is the same same kind of stuff, right? But it's uh, yeah, okay. Some madness. I, I don't know what that is. That's a phone. That's cool. <laughs> All kinds of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. And, and, and it's a little weird because th there's so many of these things where he, here's here's the code that prints out the stuff when you crash. It's like, oh, there's all the registers and such. And then here we actually crashed, I think. I think that's <laughs> us really crashing. <laughs> but it's hard to say. It, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, so, so there's, I, can, I can actually move pointers around willy-nilly, which is a little bit, uh, not just a little bit, It's this is deeply weird. Ah. Uh, and, and this, uh, this actually, again, speaking of uh, gaining strange and uh, unnatural powers, so somebody somewhere writes the class, right? And the class is like uh, the dark secrets. And uh, inside the class is something like, uh, so, so I have... Is it class related to some extent? No, no. So uh, uh, C, C++ plus plus again. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I should, uh, I should probably leave that up. So, uh, th so I, I find myself annoyed by this sometimes. The class is like, uh, oh yeah, we got the, uh, you know, it's the end of, uh, or, or uh, I don't know, it's got a float at. And, and it's set the float to some, some useful value. And uh, we want to know what X is. Actually, I, I've had to do this for debugging. I've had to do this for, uh, yeah, if you're trying to extract data from something or other. There is no way to get X out of this class in, pl in C++. It's just, can't can't do it. Ah, n n okay. I, this this I shouldn't use float yet. Uh, so uh, the care is exclamation mark. Uh, there's no way to know what the care is, right? In other words, if I if I'm like okay, if if there's a, if I have an instance of the dark secrets class, so dark secrets, uh, there there it is. I can't re return d dot x. That doesn't work. It says like x is private. You can't. No one can know what that is. It's uh, that's that's annoying. Uh, but why, why not? X isn't made private, or is it just made private by default? Uh, it's private by default. It's probably better to say private. So uh, if there's private pieces in a class, mm -hmm. I, th th there's interesting things here. If if you look at what si so size of tells you the number of bytes in an object. So how many bytes do you think for a class that has one care? Got one care. Hopefully it's one. So yeah, it's one. So this doesn't seem that hard, right? If you want to pry the dark secrets out of there, how would you do that? So if I'm pointing to a dark secrets object, I'm really pointing to a care. So because uh, we have a type, so like in assembly, there'd literally be no, no work to do. You're just like, yep, brackets, done. Uh, simple, but uh, so, so, so here, to, to, to do this, uh, what I'm gonna have to do is, so I, I need a pointer first, because pointers are how we, uh, uh, how we transmute things. So here it's a pointer to the dark secrets. It says ampersand of D. So take the address of D. I, 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 the syntax is, I think, unilluminating here. And I want to make this a care pointer. So, so pointer to care. 
So this is just a typecast to a tear pointer of my pointer to dark secrets. And then I can dereference that new care pointer. And uh, I get the, I guess I get the, uh, the ASCII value. Or I could do a put care. So I can print, uh, print the actual value. So, so this prints it as a tear instead of as a number. So I just extracted private data. Like private is a suggestion to anyone that knows how to, you know, uh, this is more like blowing a hole in the door than picking a lock. But, yeah. sure, yeah. Uh, so, that. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> if you have a multi person project and you're like, yeah, you made it private, but uh, I blew a hole in the door, it's fine. Like, it's not a great long term strategy. <laughs> like, uh, it's probably private for some reasonably good reason. So this is definitely, you know, in extremis, the building's on fire, like you need to make it run now, that's, that's plausible. Uh, but uh, if, if, it's, if it's anything other than like, you know, pretty, pretty uh, serious. So this is, so, so this is what, what makes this non-maintainable, right? In other words, this is like, oh yeah, I just typecast it to a care. Uh, so, so for example, somebody could say, oh yeah, you know, we, we have this other thing that we need to, so here's this public and it's a, it's a long, okay. Uh, and it's like, yeah, okay, one, two, three, four, five, right? Uh, so some, some gibberish goes in there. What, what am I going to read now? I actually need to do, uh, what was the one? Uh, 41, 42, 43. What, uh, so, so, so you notice uh, I, can st I can always typecast it to a tear. It's just that uh, it's got an eight byte thing and then the care. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out a care size slice of this long, which is not right at all. So I'm gonna print probably C. Yeah. So the C is the low byte of the K long. That's not what I was after. But you could do the, the schwa read 52. Like I could I could I could work my way through it. Actually, the other thing you could do is you could uh, say I'm gonna take PC equals PC plus uh, eight, move down by eight cares because that's the size of a long, and that's, this is, so, uh, you know, the size of a long is the size of a long in C++ or C or uh, assembly. It's just, that's, that's how big that 64-bit value is, 64-bit value. So I'm doing pointer arithmetic now, right? I was pointing to the dark secrets file, and then I move down eight bytes, and hopefully I'm pointing to the, uh, that, that care, we'll find out. Yep, there it is. So I, I, I extracted its dark secrets. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, it, uh, so, so if, if I declare an array, everything in the array just shows up like, you know, I get the first entry in the array and then the next thing in memory is the next ent uh, array element. If I have a class or a struct, if it's got, you know, fields A, B, and C, you know, A is the first one, then B, then C. Yeah. Somewhere in Python is something like this, yeah, I think. I, I actually don't know how numbers are stored in Python. The, the, I know they are variable size, so it's probably not quite this simple. And uh, uh, I, I, I should say, uh, there, the, so this is really uh, brittle. I mean, uh, depends on what's in the class. Actually, if there's like a virtual method in the class, so here's like, uh, like print stuff, so it, it doesn't even have to do anything. Having a virtual method uh, makes there be yet yet more stuff, actually, and uh, yeah, so you notice we're back to C now. C, C is the first thing in K. We've skipped over eight bytes of something. The something is the virtual function table pointer, it turns out. Uh, so I, the, the, there's a whole lecture on class layouts, but uh, the, the, uh, the important idea here is that uh, Pointers allow us to transmute objects between different types, right? I can turn data into code. I can turn code into data. I can actually access parts of data that aren't normally, you know, accessible at all in, in the program. Questions? 
so I should do a few more examples back in assembly on how the stack pointer works. Because uh, so, so I, I just told you uh, the way an integer works. I'm pointing to the first byte of the integer. If I add one, I'm pointing to the next byte of the integer. I'm pointing to the first byte of a string. I add one, I'm pointing to the next byte of the string. There's only one object on the machine that actually uh, I have to do subtract to get to the next thing. And that's the stack. And this, this kind of annoys me. So for, for example, I'm going to move into rax the stack pointer. And then I'm going to push a thing. Let's see. So, so I'm, I'm going to push a, a three, because that's what I always push. And then I move into rcx the stack pointer. And now I'm going to crash, because I, I, I want to see what's in my registers. So uh, I'm going to read memory. That's the bracket at address zero. It's a weird way to. So I'm intentionally crashing right here. So, so, so the question is, when I did the push, how did the stack pointer change? So to me, the rational thing, right? If I added something to an array, to a string, to any other object, a class, it's going add is going to move uh, towards you know larger numbers. And the stack goes the opposite direction. It's this kind of historical accident. Uh, so. Why does the stack do this uh, is kind of a good question. OK, so rx is yada yada 58, and rcx is yada yada 50. Meaning, when I push, the stack pointer actually goes What's that? Uh, historically, that was the reason, yes. So, so everything else in the machine is growing like toward higher addresses, right? And, and, and typically, the, 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 way, the way the machine's set up is like first thing in memory is your code. Then you get like your, you know, if I um, allocate some stuff, I get strings, whatever, like variable size stuff is there. So that's all allocating toward, you know, lower addresses. Now, the interesting part about this, if they start the stack somewhere in the middle, and then have the stack grow the same direction everything else is, you've just fragmented your free space. Right? So, and, and, and on machines that have a limited amount of free space, this really matters. So what they did is they start the stack at, as, uh, at the highest address. And then when the stack grows, it goes to, neg to lower addresses. And then everything else is going toward higher addresses. So then like, I can have a bunch of stack space and then a bunch of uh, you know, allocated stuff and vice versa. That was the idea. And it's totally irrelevant on a 64-bit machine, but we still do it. <laughs> That's a pointer. That's the memory address of the top of the stack. So like, how far in the region is that string? Like, how big is the stack of the string? Is that I think it's only eight megs now, which is kind of crazy because like this this number is way more than eight megs. Uh, yeah. Uh, so so l l let me show you some sort of sane uses of this. Uh, so let's see. So we just pushed a three. If I want to get the three off the stack without actually popping, like later I want to do a pop uh, into uh, RGX or something, then uh, if, if, if I want to load the thing off the top of the stack, I can, I can get the pointer to the top, top of the stack is always in the register RSP. So what number is that that I just returned? What, what, what is that? That's a pointer to the thing on the top of the stack. So if I want to read the memory at that pointer, how do I do that? Just got to put, put brackets on it. So this, yeah, dereference that pointer. And uh, hopefully Rx is going to have the value 3. Yes. Uh, right. So I, 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 I store something on the stack. And I just, uh, so this isn't like a pop, because pop like changes the stack pointer. This is just like a, you know, a read out of the middle of the stack. So, uh, so, so this is cool. So OK, I can push. Uh, what if I realized, you know, I've already read the value. I don't need to pop at all. How would you manually fix up the stack pointer? Subtract is exactly, that would be sane. I agree. And the way I would remove something from an array would be subtract. To remove from a string would be subtract. To remove from anything else would be subtract. The stack just grows the opposite direction. So to remove something from the stack, you add. It hurts me. It really does. 
And uh, th so, so the problem with doing stuff with pointers is like losing track in your head of what the pointers are pointing to and uh, you end up breaking everything. And, and the fact that uh, sometimes the diagram is drawn this way, which means the stack is drawing, I don't know, it's, uh, it's, it's weird. Uh, so uh, so it, it turns out the stack pointer, uh, you add to the stack pointer, which uh, that would be that way. And, and it's, it's, so uh, we, we say the top of the stack, right? So for example, here I got RSP. So, so far I pushed it, so, so there's RSP. I push a three, that means the new top of the stack, right? So the, 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 the one thing I like about the zero down is the top of the stack, so the stack always goes up. And then I pop and I'm uh, uh, ch chopping the stack back down. So I in order to chop the stack back down so I can uh, get back to main, I just have to add eight bytes to RS, eight, eight bytes, four bytes? What, uh, it's probably eight, because uh, what three is like a full size number there. So I'm gonna add uh, eight bytes to RSP. And uh, you notice we did not crash when we exited, despite there's a push, and this is the equivalent of a pop, right? Read the thing on the top of the stack, and then move the stack pointer uh, uh, right down to, uh, to to chop it off. Does that make sense? Well, we just like step through this. Yeah. yeah. It's really slow. So we push three. So that means we put three onto the stack. Uh, yes. And uh, and actually, yeah. And tra trace. Maybe we'll make this a little clearer too. Hopefully. Right. So. And then what, what RSP so. From the bracket operator. So that's saying. So RSP is the pointer. Yeah. The bracket is going to go into memory at that pointer. So dereference the pointer. Dereference the pointer. So it puts three into RAF. Yeah, and that, that way, yeah. So then we add eight bytes to the stack pointer. Yeah, and this moves us, uh, uh, this, this uh, so we were pointing to the three, and yeah. then we're going to be pointing to the thing below the three, deeper in the stack. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Sorry. So this doesn't, this as it is will not return a three. This will return uh, I, I well, I copied the three into RAX, so that's why it returns it. So if I returned oh. R, if I moved it into RDX, then that would uh, that would return whatever was in RAX, which gotcha. is so well, that's what that's what confused me right there. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm I'm out of time. Uh, there's a homework due tomorrow, and then there's another half homework. Uh, if you'd like to ch pl practice this pointer stuff, that'd be a very good idea. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I'm kind of cool. I really.